Have you ever wondered which animal rules every ocean on our planet? Coastlines, tropics, polar seas, and even the darkest depths? Today we're diving into the lives of one of the most widespread, intelligent, and downright fascinating creatures on the planet. Orcas. These iconic black and white marine mammals have held our fascination and sometimes our fear for centuries. From being called killer whales and blackfish to their scientific name, or Orcinus orca, meaning belonging to the realm of the dead. These apex predators seem cloaked in legends that match their formidable reputation. But is there more to orcas than sheer power? Join me on this journey as we explore their razor-sharp hunting tactics, their mind-bending communication skills, and the culture that makes them not just top predators, but some of the most socially complex animals on the planet. This is All Things Orca. Orcas are found in every ocean on Earth, making them the second most widespread mammal after humans. Whether it's the frigid Arctic, the sun-soaked tropics, or the stormy southern ocean around Antarctica, you'll find orcas patrolling those waters. This global presence is partly thanks to their adaptability. They're able to thrive in waters ranging from near-freezing temperatures to more temperate or even tropical climates. It's a testament to just how hardy and clever they really are. One might say if there was a frequent swimmers club, orcas would have racked up enough miles to visit every corner of the planet multiple times over. Over the centuries, sailors and seaside communities gave orcas many ominous names. Blackfish, whale killer, grampus, terms that fueled terrifying legends. The name killer whale can be misleading though. Scientists now classify orcas under the dolphin family, making them the largest dolphins on earth. Of course, that doesn't make them any less fearsome. For centuries, orcas have earned a place at the very top of the marine food chain. But ironically, the label killer whale is actually a mistranslation. The original Spanish name was Asesina de Ballenas, meaning whale killers. Over time, it flipped to killer whale. So do they really kill whales? Absolutely, but we'll get to that part soon. Orcas don't just survive in the oceans, they dominate. They hunt everything. Fish, seals, sea lions, other dolphins, sharks, and even massive whales like humpbacks and gray whales. One of the most jaw-dropping hunting stories involves orcas targeting great white sharks. Working in pods, they'll ram into the shark's sides to stun them, then flip them upside down to induce tonic immobility, basically rendering the shark paralyzed. If that weren't startling enough, orcas often extract only the shark's livers, which are packed with nutrients. The precision can be so surgical it leaves scientists speechless. Great white sharks have been found washed ashore with just a small incision under the pectoral fin and a missing liver. Perhaps even more wild, if a shark escapes an orca attack, that shark typically abandons its hunting grounds for up to a year, presumably traumatized by the encounter. Talk about a predator with a fear factor. Great white sharks are scary enough in most people's imaginations, but imagine a predator so intimidating that even the great white flees in terror. That's orcas for you. Orcas are often called the wolves of the sea, but that analogy might do a disservice just to how sophisticated their teamwork is. In Antarctica, some pods specialize in creating waves by swimming together in a tight formation. They'll aim these waves at ice flows where seals rest, effectively washing the seals right into the water and into orca jaws. Elsewhere, pods encircle schools of fish, blowing bubbles and slapping the water with their tails to tighten the fish into a bait ball. And then there's the legendary beach hunting off Argentina's coast, where orcas actually launch themselves onto the shoreline to catch unsuspecting sea lions. This tactic is so dangerous that orcas meticulously train their young for years before letting them attempt the real thing. Orcas weren't always marine superstars. Tracing back 50 million years, we find Pachycetus, a wolf-sized, land-dwelling creature believed to be among the earliest ancestors of modern whales and dolphins. Over millions of years, some of these ancestors ventured more and more into the sea, gradually swapping legs for flippers. If you look at a modern orca's front flippers under an x-ray, you'll see structures reminiscent of arm, wrist, and finger bones. They have a vestigial pelvic bone, an evolutionary souvenir from when their ancestors once walked on land. Through this grand journey, orcas have become streamlined marine predators with a distinct black and white pattern in a body that's essentially a torpedo built for speed. Orcas might look deceptively sleek, but they are massive. Adult males can be over 9 meters or 30 feet long and weigh as much as 10 tons, roughly the weight of a fully loaded school bus. 
Their tall, triangular dorsal fin alone can stand up to six feet high, a dorsal fin so large you can sometimes spot it from nearly a mile away. In the water, these powerhouse predators can top speeds of 35 kilometers per hour, and they've even been recorded breaching up to 15 feet in the air. Don't let the panda coloration fool you. If you're their target, they bring serious force. Their bite power dwarfs that of a great white shark. Imagine a school bus going 20 plus miles per hour, then imagine it has teeth and really wants sushi for dinner. That's an orca for you. Orcas rarely operate solo. They live in tight-knit family groups called pods, typically led by an older female or a matriarch. These matrilineal groups can be small or large, with some resident pods exceeding 20 to 30 individuals, while some transient pods number only a few. Resident orcas are more predictable in location, often found near coastlines, preferring a diet of fish, especially salmon. They can have multiple subgroups in the same general region, each with its own unique dialect. Transient, or Biggs orcas, are stealthy hunters targeting marine mammals like seals, sea lions, and porpoises. Transient orcas are typically quieter, they often avoid making noise so they don't alert their swift-moving prey. Offshore orcas are a lesser-known group that roams far out at sea, possibly preying on sharks and deep-sea fish. They travel in larger pods and remain something of a mystery to researchers. Each group develops its own hunting traditions and even vocal accents, which leads us to one of the most fascinating aspects of orca life, their complex communication system. Communication is crucial for orcas. Scientists have identified three main categories of vocalization, clicks, whistles, and calls. Clicks are used for echolocation like a biological sonar. The orca's powerful melon, that rounded forehead, focuses these sounds into a beam. The returning echoes paint a mental map of their environment. Orcas can detect fish hundreds of feet away, identify the fish species, and zero in on exactly what they want. Talk about shopping with precision. Whistles. Whistles are a more private, close-range communication likely to coordinate movements or maintain social bonds. These are quieter and don't carry far. They're perfect for stealth scenarios, especially for those mammal-eating orcas that need the element of surprise. Pulse calls, the loud pulsing shouts or songs that can travel miles. They serve as group signals reinforcing pod identity, coordinating hunts, or possibly social bonding. In some cases, they can reach volumes comparable to a jet engine. What's mind-blowing is that these calls are learned, not inherited. Calves must pick them up from their elders much like humans learn language. This suggests that orcas have a culture robust enough to pass down knowledge from generation to generation. In some areas, like the Northern Pacific, scientists have discovered that pods living side by side can have totally different call repertoires, almost like distinct languages or dialects. These variations remain stable over decades, forming an essential part of each pod's cultural identity. And orca culture isn't just about how they talk, it's about how they live. Different pods have different favorite prey, different techniques for hunting, and different rituals for rearing young. Perhaps the wildest part? Scientists believe orcas could be heading towards speciation, driven not by geography, but by culture. Resident orcas and transient orcas rarely interbreed, having distinct lifestyles, diets, and communication styles. Over time, these cultural boundaries might become so rigid that they eventually form separate species. Orcas aren't just strong, they're astonishingly smart. Their brains are the second largest among marine mammals, beaten only by the sperm whale, weighing up to 6.8 kilograms or 15 pounds, but size alone doesn't equal intelligence. The key measure is something called encephalization quotient, essentially how big the brain is relative to its body size. Humans rank about seven on the EQ scale, and bottlenose dolphins rank around four. Orcas come in around 2.5, which might look smaller than dolphins, but remember, orcas also have enormous bodies. Factor in how intricately folded their cerebral cortex is, their gyrification is off the charts compared to most mammals, even humans. This means more surface area dedicated to processing complex information. Even more intriguing is their insular cortex, linked to emotions, empathy, and self-awareness. Studies suggest that orcas might recognize themselves in mirrors, indicating a self-awareness that only a handful of species on Earth seem to possess. Recent studies propose that orcas experience something akin to grief and complex social bonding. There are anecdotes of orcas carrying their deceased calves for days. This level of emotional depth is staggeringly reminiscent of humans and other highly social species. 
Not all orcas are born professional seal snatchers. Those insane hunting tactics like the Argentine beach hunting take years of practice and mentorship. Older females often mentor young orcas, demonstrating techniques repeatedly until the calf is comfortable. They might push seaweed onto the shore to mimic a seal, letting the younger whale practice. Some youngsters never get over their fear of being stranded. Others bravely master this high-stakes skill. This apprenticeship system is another clue to just how culture-driven and family-focused orcas are. They don't just rely on instinct, they rely on education from older relatives. Just when we think we've seen it all, orcas find new ways to astonish us. A few fascinating examples here. Orcas and humpback whales cooperating. In certain regions, orcas have been observed hunting schools of fish alongside humpbacks. Sometimes these behemoths drive fish towards the orcas and vice versa. While humpbacks are usually potential prey for orcas, particularly the calves, there are occasional surprising alliances that showcase how opportunistic orcas can be. Orcas versus sailboats. Off the coasts of Portugal and Spain, boaters have reportedly seen orcas repeatedly ramming sailing vessels. Some hypothesize they're playing or investigating, others say it's defensive or territorial. While we don't have an actual explanation, it's another testament to their curiosity and problem-solving nature. Orcas hunting blue whales. In a shocking turn, scientists recently documented pods of orcas attacking and killing blue whales, the largest animals on the planet. Observers have long debated if orcas could truly take down an animal of that magnitude, but these reports confirmed orcas work in large, coordinated pods to do the unthinkable. It's as if orcas saw the biggest creature on the planet label and said, challenge accepted. For all their prowess, orcas face threats like pollution, overfishing of their key prey like salmon, and disturbances from boats or even naval sonar. Some populations like the southern resident orcas in the Pacific Northwest are endangered, with fewer than 80 individuals remaining. Protecting orcas means ensuring healthy fish populations, reducing pollutants like PCBs and heavy metals in our oceans, and managing boat traffic responsibly. Given their intelligence, social complexity, and vital role in marine ecosystems, safeguarding these apex predators benefits the entire ocean community. Orcas aren't just whales with teeth or giant dolphins, they're a window into the ocean's soul. An example of top-tier intelligence, emotional depth, and unstoppable teamwork. Whether they're coordinated wave washers, stealthy shark flippers, or cunning beach hunters, orcas truly embody the phrase, apex predator. Thank you for watching All Things Orca. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the planet's most captivating marine mammals, please like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what fact amazed you the most, and what animal you'd like to see in future episodes of All Things Marine Life.